concerning Ripple's Internet of Value and its services. Our thoughts are considerably broader than only money made across international borders. Similar to how Amazon used to deal with rare books in the early days of the company. It just so happens that this particular market will be worth $10 trillion. You have arrived at a pivotal moment in history. There was a time when you stated that you are. For the purpose of financial gain, how email changed the way people communicated, making progress with the revolution as a whole. Around the world, there are trillions of dollars that are sitting idle. It is RP. Does Ripple have a chance of being successful? Could one day take over Swift's position? Ladies and gentlemen, you are very welcome to return. All right, let's dive right into today's footage. BlackRock, Circle, USDC, Ripple, and XRP are all examples of cryptocurrencies. During these sessions, which are being held behind closed doors, a significant change is being implemented now. I am going to show you exactly why this is so essential, and I am going to open a lot of eyes. Here, licensing is happening, and licensing is something that everyone should be aware of. In the video that I am going to show you today, I am going to show you exactly why this is so important. There is no other cryptocurrency that can be compared to Ripple and XRP. At this very moment, what they are attempting to accomplish is essentially to take control of the entire world. I am aware that it seems completely insane, but be patient with me as I explain the reasoning behind my statement. But before we get into BlackRock, Circle, and all the other exciting things, let's say this first. Let us discuss the CEO of Tether. Hearing what he had to say in an interview is important. Red flags should be raised in response to this. This specific aspect of Mika is something that particularly irritates us here at Tether because it places very stringent limitations on the ways in which you may manage your reserves. When you are a small stablecoin issuer, you are required to have cash deposits at a bank that make up 30% of your reserves. This requirement increases to 60% in the case of stablecoins of systemic size like ours. However, something about this just tells me that he does not want to be exposed to so many banks. He goes on to say that if a cash deposit is made across several banking players, there should be at least six in the most favorable case and a dozen in the least favorable case. This kind of company is accepted by a very small number of institutions in Europe. There is already a great deal of difficulty in obtaining only one, and when he was asked whether he intended to be regulated in Europe in the medium term, he said that he did. Not want to do so at this time. It would appear that a number of different banks are going to be engaged. Naturally, this is what I mean when I say that institutional adoption is on the horizon, and this is the reason why Ripple is taking the initiative to create its own stablecoin and will soon announce its name, which is going to be significant. Despite the fact that things are ready to take off in a very bullish manner, the CEO of Tether is progressively attempting to break away from it. Since they do not like banks, there is a lot of dubious activity, but this is not the spread fight over Tether. They open bank accounts using funny documents, but with Mika, you won't be able to do that anymore. There is a lot of shady activity. There are a lot of warning signs within Tether, and there is no licensing, which is something that we are going to discuss in a moment. Now let's talk about the BlackRock USD Institutional Digital Liquidity Fund. A couple of weeks ago, they made this announcement, but they did not specify the amount or the size of the issuer that they declined. However, now Circle has declared that USDC smart contracts will be used for transactions when BlackRock's build fund investors are involved. Take heed of what they have to say here. It is necessary for Build to transfer their shares to Circle USDC by providing investors with a near instant tee off ramp that is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. This smart contract brings to bear the fundamental advantages of tokenized assets, which are speed, transparency, and efficiency. However, it is important to keep in mind that Circle and USDC still require aid in scaling their digital asset, which is their USDC stablecoin. It seems to me that we are quite close. I am referring to the fact that USDC itself has witnessed more than $3.5 trillion worth of transactions that have taken place directly on the internet between counterparties. Therefore, if we are able to improve it with more scalable blockchain technologies, such as the ones that Brad's company offers, we can do so without the influence of toll takers who are attempting to extract a rent from the members of society who are in desperate need of every last penny. The fact that Ripple is positioned in such a way that they have a stablecoin and yet have their own bridge currency to scale it is absolutely mind-boggling. They are in possession of everything. A full-fledged enterprise is what they are. Circle entered this space with little more than a stablecoin. The most important thing is to have a bridge currency, which is a digital asset with a long track record, such as XRP. What are your thoughts on the fact that Circle did not release something similar to a clone of XRP? Due to the fact that at the end of the day, it is all about the track record, the durability of that system, the amount of time it has been utilized, and the amount of downtime. Ripple is fortunate enough to have everything under their belt, despite the fact that they look at all of that. 
Items. USDC offers users who are interested in selling their created shares but still want to keep their digital dollars give a technique that is both trustworthy and transparent. Built's goal is to provide a consistent value of $1 per token, and it sends daily dividends to investors, which are payments that have been accrued over the course of the day. In that case, you are going to have to pick up the pace of things. Every month, new tokens are added to wallets. Investors are able to earn yield while holding the token on the blockchain since the fund invests 100% of its. Total assets in cash dollar notes issued by the United States Treasury and repurchase agreements. Furthermore, at the end of the day, these things need to be regulated. Whatever it is that is being utilized within this small umbrella frame needs to be monitored, and they indicate that the minimum amount of money required for the initial investment is $5 million. On the other hand, let's get this trio together. The XRP the trio was constructed by USDC. It is possible that integrating USDC smart contracts with Ripple's technology for transfers within BlackRock's created fund might be of significant assistance in growing operations while simultaneously improving the efficiency and accessibility of the fund investors. By utilizing Ripple's XRP ledger for transactions, the construct of fund is able to take advantage of the speedy transaction processing and low cost that Ripple offers. For a fund such as Build, which routinely manages frequent transactions, such as daily payouts and continuing transfers among participants, this is a beneficial situation. The rapid processing speed contributes to the timely distribution of dividends, which is quite important. When it comes to a fund that works on a small margin in order to guarantee stability and income, reducing transaction costs might be a significant benefit. The enormous network of financial institutions that Ripple possesses has the potential to assist in expanding the reach of Build Fund to new markets and investors all around the world. All right, and let me to demonstrate the most significant aspect of all of this to you. There are nations in Singapore that are controlling USDC, and there are more countries that will be regulated in the future. On the right-hand side, you will find USDC in every state. In addition, you will see XRP on the left-hand side. On the right, you can see their money transmitter licenses, which are identical to those of USDC. At this very moment, I have no doubt that Ripple is submitting all of their applications in order to obtain their stablecoin licensing in each and every one of these governments and jurisdictions all over the world. Just as we speak, it is taking place. In this particular section, a great number of individuals fail to comprehend the wider picture due to the fact that Algorand, Hedera, and Stellar do not possess any of these licensing in any way. It is not a negative thing, then. The performance of these assets is going to be satisfactory, but the larger picture that I am attempting to convey to you is that Ripple is an institution. Ripple is a bank that possesses all of these licenses and together with all of the institution partners that they have, Ripple is the next bank. According to their beliefs, stablecoins have the potential to increase in value, access to financial services, and become a viable payment mechanism. However, in order for this to occur, there must be regulation in place to avoid fraud and crashes and to safeguard users from being abused. Now, here's the actual question if these stablecoins are regulated in the same way that banks are, wouldn't they wind up being the banks that crypto assets were supposed to replace? An idea that is going to be successful, and I have been completely wrong about it. I salute you to Brad Garlinghouse and the rest of his company. Now that you know about it, Ripple is an institution. A great number of individuals are that they are unaware of, but in the near future, it will become abundantly evident and they will even be proclaiming that in the years to come. On the other hand, the importance of holding these licenses is often neglected. For Stellar, there is nothing available in the market. For Hedera, there is nothing available in the market. When it comes to Al Grant, there is nothing available. I don't 